Before I get into actually talking about the main subject of my video, I just wanted to remind you of something. And that is that the laws of nature are somewhat of a holy grail to the scientists. People have been trying for almost two millennia, three millennia now, at this stage, to come up with a definitive set of laws of nature. This started back with Aristotle, with his observations about reality, how nature worked and how things behaved in nature. But I think, you know, one of the people who laid the groundwork for uh, modern theories is Galileo. And one of the first people who actually created an actual theory containing actual formalized laws of nature would have been Isaac Newton. But it didn't stop there and it has been steadily improving since Einstein created his theories about relativity. After that, um, quantum mechanics, QED, added their observations and their improvements and since then we've been looking at things such as string theory, quantum gravity and so on and so forth and uh, quantum loop gravity and we have been making slow maybe but steady progress as to creating better and better laws of nature. Now before I go on I just want to talk about one very different thing and that's a video that I saw this morning by Tool Time. Tool Time was talking about a Christian apologetics video that he saw that he thought was quite amusing, it was very cartoonish and he couldn't believe that Christians actually believed such a thing. One thing that struck in my mind about that video was where he was talking about a part of the video where a man was showing a mechanical dog and he was saying that that object, because it was a mechanical object, was not capable of expressing free will. I think we can all agree on that. But he then produced a puppy, a real life puppy, and he was telling us that it could out of its own free will choose to love people. Now I find that a little bit confusing because I'm pretty sure at this stage, having listened to many different Christians, that at least one Christian I've been listening to has got their theology wrong here because you see the thing is that I've been told by many Christians that the only living creatures that have been given this precious thing called free will are humans so that we humans can choose or choose not to accept the grace of Jesus Christ so if that man was there claiming that that puppy had free will then should that puppy accept the grace of Jesus Christ and is it risking eternal flames if it doesn't? Inquiring minds like to know. But now let's get into the main bulk of the video. You see you might sit there now thinking okay where, how did one thing lead to another there? How come he started talking about the laws of nature first and then about a puppy and its supposed free will? Well, the link between the two is of course the discussion of free will. And here is the rub. People who are not of a Christian bent, people who don't subscribe to theological points of view and God's handing down free will on a silver platter to unsuspecting human beings, those people atheists would often deny the possibility of free will and one very strong argument against free will is this and it is very compelling indeed you see the, the laws of nature as we know them so far seem to be deterministic and it doesn't really matter if laws of nature contain something like a uncertainty principle, for example, like in quantum mechanics. That doesn't change the fact that they are, in fact, deterministic. In quantum mechanics, for example, you have this thing called the wave function, which is completely deterministic. There is no room for maneuver there. And that then leads to the following line of reasoning. 
in a universe that is governed by a deterministic set of laws of nature, there is no room for maneuver. Everything in that universe is determined precisely by those laws of nature. You can effectively calculate what will happen next based on what you know about the state of that universe. The laws of nature inexorably make it do whatever it does. And for free will, there is no room in such a universe. Well, that argument is of course very compelling. And you might just be inclined to accept it and move on, thinking you do not have such a thing as free will. But there are a number of possible objections to that. The first one I have already explored quite extensively in a playlist I did on the, to on the topic of free will. And that's this. You see, if you think about free will in this pure philosophical sense, you are very likely to lose sight of the fact that we're trying to establish something that we all commonly know we possess. Intuitively, we have this strong sense that we are free to decide for ourselves, out of our own free will, what we're going to do next. How does that square with the idea that the laws of nature that govern the universe are completely deterministic? Well, you see, there's the rub. We are, of course, in making our decisions, informed by our wants and needs. Our, our wants and needs decide what we want to happen next. That can be completely deterministic. I, because of the way my body function, functions, have the need to eat and I feel hungry and that then causes me, no free will involved, causes me to want to eat. But now, here is the point where I believe a level of freedom comes in. You see, given the fact that I'm hungry and given the fact that I want to eat at this point in time, I am now fully aware of the options that are available to me. I know what's in my cupboards. I know what I can do. I know I can cook. I know what ingredients I have available to me and I can, based on all the information that I know, decide what course of action to take next. And my contention, first of all, is that what more freedom could you possibly want? How, what, other than the fact that you can discover all the options that are available to you and based on what you know, arrive at a decision on what to do next, what more would you want in order to think that you truly had free will? I think being able to do that is enough freedom for what an organism like me could possibly want from life, from reality. So I would stop navel-gazing about this whole free will thing and start realizing that we do have the level of freedom that allows us that take all our options into account and to make a decision and that we should really and truly, we should call that capacity, that capability, that is what we should call free will. Anything over and beyond that is mental masturbation, really, and it's complete, completely pointless. What would be the purpose of being able to avail of options that you don't know are available to you, or to do things that go against your own wants and needs? How would that improve your sense of having free will? That was more or less what my playlist on free will boiled down to. But there's more than that. You see, the thing is that I've been spinning you a very convoluted little lie here all along. 
and you probably didn't even notice I did it. Because we are so used to thinking about reality in these terms. I've been telling you on a number of occasions in the last few minutes that the universe appears to be governed by a set of deterministic rules. Don't get me wrong. All the rules of nature that we have discovered so far are undeniably deterministic in the strictest sense of the word. But why do we think that our universe is governed by those rules? We are guilty of putting the cart before the horse by saying exactly that. A universe that would be governed by laws of nature is a universe to which the laws of nature are external, where the laws of nature are imposed on that universe from the outside by something that is ex external to reality. In actual fact, by making the claim that our universe is governed by deterministic or otherwise laws of nature, we have in fact, like a bad magician, pulled the rabbit out of a hat that we just put in ourselves, in plain view of the audience. Except nobody was looking at the rabbit and nobody noticed. But I did. So what is the problem here? The problem is that our universe is not governed by laws of nature. The laws of nature emerge from the universe. The universe generates its own laws of nature by the simple fact that it will remain internally consistent in some way, shape or form. What we do when we are engaged in science is not discovering laws of nature, we are creating them. And don't think that I'm going all mystical here and metaphysical or any such nonsense. Don't worry about that. What I am saying is that we are creating formalized descriptions of the regularities that we observe in reality. Those regularities are there because reality is internally consistent. And it's just as well that it is because otherwise anything could happen. And nothing would make any sense whatsoever. But reality is internally consistent. And as a result, when you observe reality from within reality, as we undeniably are, we will observe regularities. And those regularities that we observe is what we call the laws of nature. But what we must never, ever lose sight of is the fact that the laws of nature are descriptive. They are not prescriptive. They do not tell reality how to behave. Since the universe is not governed by laws of nature, since there's nothing external to the universe imposing its will on the universe, causing it to behave in a very deterministic manner. The universe, therefore, is not deterministic. People make this mistake all the time, thinking that the opposite of deterministic is a random free-for-all in which anything can happen at any time. Obviously, that's not the case. The universe is an internally consistent whole and that is just as well because otherwise we would be living in La La Land. We are clearly not living in La La Land. But because the universe is literally all there is and there is no such thing as an external reality to the universe, the universe is by definition not deterministic. And whatever else there may be going on in the universe, whatever other restrictions 
reality may impose on us, what we can or cannot do, how we are driven by our internal instincts, by our wants and needs, how our physical limitations determine what we can or cannot do. There is no such thing as determinism removing any possibility of free will altogether. That at least should be some bit of consolation. And I would like to remind you again of what I said earlier about our ability to look at the options, establish what the options are and to make an informed choice based on what we want. Again, what more do you want from this supposed magical thing called free will? Obviously, there is no Jesus whose grace we should be accepting or any such nonsense as I see it. But we have the ability to see the options that are open to us while we're leading our life. And we are quite capable of making the most of it and making the best of it. And I think we should do that. Because in the end, we only have one life. And it is what you make of it.